Hi-ho there. So in the most recent recording, I defined current for you. So what I said was that uh, um, if we now allow our charges, our source charges, to move from place to place, which we hadn't done before, by the way, please remember that, then new things occur. And the uh, whole purpose of these next several lectures is to explore what happens, why, what the new things are, how we calculate them, and so on. So we have our charges, uh, and um, we cause them to move. And uh, we do so, of course, the way you always do, is by that you place them in, uh, in an electric field, uh, which applies a force on them, and so they accelerate. But we're, we're long past the, uh, the point of thinking about it in terms of electric field. And now, instead, we're going to think about it in terms of uh, the electric potential uh, is causing these charges to move. Okay. And so uh, I mentioned, first of all, the current, which I gave the symbol, let me say this, uh, electric current, or typically I'll just say current. So I'll give it the symbol capital I. I think I mentioned in the other recording, a lot of times uh, books and other things will use lowercase i as well as capital I. I uh, personally, uh, I use the symbol capital I pretty much uh, only, uh, but whatever. So don't, don't be terribly confused by the whole uh, uppercase, lowercase thing. Anyway, the current I, I said, uh, represents the rate at which charges move uh, from place to place within a, cir a, a circuit path. As it turns out, a, cl a closed circuit path, and I will explain what that means in more detail shortly. Uh, and I said, Specifically, if I take a battery, and why a battery? Because the battery is going to supply the potential difference that is going to drive the current. Remember, charges flow uh, our positive, our imaginary positive charge carriers uh, will flow spontaneously from high potential to low potential. Okay? And if I then <coughs> attach a wire to the top of the battery and then put a and, and then optionally, but almost always, uh, put some sort of a device in the middle of the circuit path. Why am I doing that? I hope it's obvious why, because the whole reason for setting up the circuit in the first place is to put a device in here that will do something I want to do. Put a light bulb in there to, to give me light, put a uh, television in there so that I can watch TV, whatever, whatever the object is. Whatever it is, I will represent it with this uh, sawtooth kind of uh, symbol. And we're going to focus a great deal of our attention on that thing in a little bit. In any case, so the battery supplies the potential difference. The, uh, there are charges uh, in the battery. The, uh, originally, when the battery is fully uh, powered, you know, fully charged, fully powered, when the battery is fresh, the, uh, uh, there's um, Equal amounts of positive and negative charge in the battery, and the battery is electrically neutral overall. However, there is a charge distribution within the battery, and we can at least imagine it uh, imperfectly, but sufficiently for now anyway, that the top half of the battery is positively charged, the bottom half is negatively charged. Now, I warn you, it's not quite as simple as that, but it, for most of the questions that we want to ask and answer, that idea will be sufficient. Someday we'll get into questions that uh, um, that model doesn't work perfectly, and then if that if we ever do run into those kind of questions, we'll have to investigate the internal workings of a battery a little more carefully. But until that day comes, let's choose sort of the simple model and say the top half of the battery is uh, has a net positive charge, the bottom half has a net negative charge. Whatever the actual internals of the battery is, the fact remains that the top of the battery is at a higher potential then use the bottom of the battery. And indeed, for most practical purposes, we define the bottom of the battery to be where our zero of electric potential is located. Remember, we're always free to define our zero of electric potential to be anywhere we want. OK, so that done, that defined, I said, uh, OK, our imaginary positive charge carriers will start to flow from the top side of the battery and head towards the bottom of the battery because, again, they're going from high potential to low potential. 
And literally what's happening is that there are positively charged objects that are moving from the top of the battery to the bottom. But we, uh, for reasons that I've explained <coughs> over and over and over again, we're not going to think of them in terms of individual charges most of the time. Uh, what I am going to say, however, what I did say, is uh, that if you were to measure uh, how much charge past, let's say, this point, call it, call it A, if I were to measure <coughs> the, uh, how much charge uh, passed by that point in the circuit every second, and I get some number of coulombs that passed every second, and that concept is what I'm defined, uh, what I have defined to be the um, the electric current. And the specific expression that I came up with <clears throat> is that the electric current is calculated as how much current goes by delta Q <clears throat> over what time interval, one second or one millisecond or one nanosecond or whatever my time interval happens to be. So uh, and then I said the units of this are, of course, coulombs per second, but we define the ampere, symbol is capital A, as to be a coulomb per second. And so <clears throat> we talk about a current of so, of so many amps or so many amperes. Uh, and so I, that review. Okay. So now, uh, so that's what I did last time. So now the next question I'd like to deal with is uh, how big a current flows. What causes the current to flow? Well, we've already sort of discussed that. Well, how big is the effect of that? Uh, what, let me start over. What, the answer to the question, what causes the current to flow, is, of course, how big is this potential difference by, by the battery? The bigger that potential difference is, the bigger current I'm going to get. Oh, that's reasonable. Uh, but then, it seems plausible to believe that this device, which is, after all, what we're uh, sending our current through, our light bulb or our toaster or whatever this is, <clears throat> it seems reasonable to expect that this would have some effect on the, on the uh, movement of charge, it would have some effect on the current, and it does, and we're going to be investigating that in considerable detail in this video. <clears throat> okay. Uh, to start off with, so, you know, my end game here is going to be uh, to generate an equation, which is the answer to the question. All right, so let's investigate this. To start off with, as I just said, the potential difference supplied by the battery, and by the way, this doesn't have to be a battery. This could be the wall outlet uh, at your house or apartment. Um, but let's, just for the sake of sanity, let's just c uh, call it a battery and stick with that. All right, so this battery here, it supplies a potential difference, which supplies an electric field, uh, which causes the charge to flow. That's fine. Uh, and so ordinarily, I would, and I, I would do what I have already done many times in the past, and I would just label this uh, with uh, uh, capital B because that's what it is. Except it turns out that it's a little uh, more subtle than that. And to understand that, I'm going to instead shift my attention over to this object here. Okay. The, uh, this object here, like I said, it's a toaster, it's a hair dryer, it's a vacuum cleaner, it's a laptop, whatever it is. The fact is, uh, we find experimentally, that yes, indeed, this object does have an effect on the current that flows through the circuit. And the effect that it has is it tends to impede, tend, tends to slow down, tends to resist the flow of current. Uh, the, uh, without this object in place, in other words, if I just had a, uh, a continuous literal piece of wire, like an alligator clip or something like that, okay, then the current that flowed would flow very easily. Remember that this wire, and let's be definite, let's think about the, uh, 
uh, that's just a battery here, a few alligator clips clipped together, and then the other side of that, and nothing else. Well, remember that the uh, alligator clip uh, leads are made of copper, and copper is not only an excellent conductor, it is, uh, it is one of the best conductors of, of uh, charge, or what I will now say, the, one of the best conductors of current. And so it's very, very easy, in fact, much easier for charge to move through copper than it is for, for, copper, for charges to move through anything else. If I, if I take out some of the copper and replace it with anything other than copper, then there's going to be more resistance to the flow of charge, uh, and therefore it's going to be harder for the charge to flow, and indeed the current will decrease as a, as a result. Okay? And in fact, now don't misunderstand me. Uh, I don't, want, don't take this too far. Current absolutely will still flow. It's just that the amount of current that we get with this, resist, this object that provides resistance uh, in place, that amount of current will be less than the, than the amount of current that we get if we didn't have this object in the circuit. Okay? And in fact, the property that I've just been rattling off, resistance, is exactly what we call it. And we refer to this object as a resistor. Uh, it doesn't matter what it physically is, whether it's a light bulb or a, or a laptop or a... Uh, or, you know, a, a dog toy. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what dogs do. But anyway, no matter what it is, if we're running current through it, it's slowing down the current. And so just generically, we refer to anything that resists the flow of current as a resistor, no matter what the object physically is. And so I will label that with R, with the letter R. And R will have a numeric value, that, and that numeric value will represent the resistance to flow that this device presents to the, to the circuit. Okay, so the, uh, the partial answer then to my question, what current flows, is uh, the amount of current that flows is going to be affected by the presence of this resistance, and, and specifically, and not unexpectedly, the, more, the, the bigger the resistance is, the more resistance this object has to flow, the less flow we're going to get. And so that tells us that the current that flows is going to be proportional to the inverse uh, of R. The bigger R gets, the smaller the current gets. Okay? So I is inversely proportional to the resistance. So I'll say that. Now I haven't defined resistance in any real way yet, and I'm not going to. I'm going to hold off on that. There's a formal definition of this. Um, temporarily, I will simply say that R is a measure of how difficult it is for current to flow through a device or through a circuit or just there's basically two perspectives that we do here one we can talk about the resistance at a single object a single light bulb a single laptop uh, did I really say chew toy what an odd thing a dog toy what an odd thing to say uh, whatever the devices that we're powering, all devices are going to present some resistance. And uh, so we can talk about resistance of a single object, or we can talk about the total combined resistance of all the objects that we have uh, inserted in the circuit. You can obviously have lots of light bulbs, lots of lamps, lots of laptops, lots of televisions, all in the same circuit. Okay? And the total resistance, we can talk about either the resistance of each one of those objects individually, or we can talk about the total resistance of the entire circuit, the combination of all of them. We'll discover that calculating the total resistance of all of the objects is moderately complicated because it depends on a number of things. But let's not worry about that right now. Let's simply accept the idea that having these electronic devices in the circuit will make it more difficult for current to flow from the top of the battery to the bottom of the battery 
that property that makes it more difficult for current to flow. We will call resistance to flow or just resistance for short, and we will be able to put a number to that. And so the first part of our answer, what current flows, is uh, the more resistance to flow there is in the entire circuit, the less current you're going to get. And another different point of view, the more resistance there is in a single electronic device, the less current there is through that individual electronic device. Okay, so those are uh, two perspectives. All right, so that's the first thing. Now, uh, it's uh, an important question as to where that resistance comes from, what causes it, and can we calculate it? And I will talk about that eventually. But I'm going to uh, um, stop here, and in the next video, I'm going to turn my attention to the battery, which you would have thought would have been pretty simple. Just it's V. It's the potential supplied by the battery. It's one and a half volts or three volts or whatever the battery is. Turns out it's not quite that simple because there's something going on that I haven't told you about before now. That will be the next lecture.